What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cosmatch Wrestling Recap. Let's get right into a jam-packed episode of Monday Night Raw. What did you think of the show, Matt? Jam-packed. I'm going to stop before you even go any further, because that's what Raw was, dude. It's just before Not anything else could happen, it just was non-stop, okay? I think for the first hour of the show, it really got me out of my feet. Nonetheless, the second hour of the show, third hour, I don't really say it dragged, you know? It wasn't really lacking much. And honestly, this main event is exactly something that what the crowd needed, especially for the past few weeks when we were teased the match. First, that Raw's XXX got cut too short, then the week after. And now we finally had had this matchup. Super pumped about it. But let's talk about the way the show opened up with Edge and Beth Phoenix. Huge ovation from the crowd. Nonetheless, in Orlando, the crowd was just phenomenal and all excuse me, phenomenal all night. A recap, basically, of what Judgment Day did at Extreme Rules um, with Edge's return and also um, with Beth Phoenix leading up to Royal Rumble, um, leading up to Monday Night Raw, which is tonight. So Judgment Day comes down, um, kind of starting to circle the ring as we actually learned that it's going to be. Um, she was all pissed off, Beth Phoenix. She was pissed off the whole the whole segment, basically, the whole night. Ready to ever, fight, since, man. ever since she came out. So it's going to be. Beth Phoenix laying a challenge out with her and Edge versus Finn, the leader of Judgment Day, and Rhea Ripley, who is not there um, on Raw this this week. So Judgment Day goes to circle the ring for an attack. Street Profits come out to make the save. Perfect timing because it's supposed to be Priest and Dawkins for a spot inside the men's chamber match elimination. Chamber match, nonetheless, can't wait for it. Such talented stars. Okay, let's get to this match. Dude, okay. this is absolutely awesome, dude. Beth Phoenix, I love seeing her in the ring, hitting that glam slam on Dom, and then it led us right oh. into our first match of the night, an Elimination Chamber qualifier. You know, I will say, D- Angelo Dawkins has been making a name for himself the past few weeks, let alone if he's with Montez Ford or not. Um, big moves from Dawkins, okay? Priest was able to secure a win, earning his spot inside the men's chamber match, inching his uh, way closer to... Um, that United States championship. But you know what? Nonetheless, if they're going to split apart Montez Ford, who has a, a, a qualifying match later on in the night, they're going to split the Street Profits apart. Maybe don't have don't have them feud. Don't have them feud, of course. But you know what? I think this could be good for both men. Angelo Dawkins, he has it with the crowd. And you know what? He also has that athleticism. He's I think he's one of the best improved superstars in recent history when it comes to people who have been kind of looked down upon as a singles competitor. Oh, without a doubt, man. He really showed it in this match against Damian Priest. Big move after big move, and it was a good win for Damian Priest in the Judgment Day, having a participant, one of theirs, move into the Elimination Chamber. Yeah, nonetheless. And you know what? I'm just super stoked for not just the women's, but but really the men's. They Triple H really outdid it this year. Let's move forward. Baron Corbin versus Dexter Loomis. Second match of the night, JBL and, of course, Gargano win their corners. Corbin actually attacks Loomis as he entered the ring to get a quick early advantage. Flurries and moves. Loomis hit a big slide slam for the win. Kind of a disappointment for JBL as he looked on. Um, But as we learn later on in the night, as before we get to another match, I'll explain this quickly. Later on in the night, though, JBL meets up with Baron Corbin backstage. Her business is teased in the back talking. So MVP... Cedric and Shelton Benjamin before they have a match later on tonight. They're talking business in the back as JBL and Baron Corbin. JBL basically abandons Baron saying he's he's basically nothing. It's, he's, he's putting bad name on the word JBL, making JBL look bad. He's basically done. I think JBL is going to do some work in NXT. Not really sure. Uh, but could we see the lone wolf possibly come back? Could we see something different for Baron Corbin? I certainly hope so because it's been a little bit of nothing but lackluster. Um so let's talk about a fatal four-way spot for the women's chamber match. Carmella, Piper Neven, uh, Misha Mia Yim, and Candice LeRae for one of the last two spots. Entertaining four-way women match. Honestly, I was expecting, sure. I, I, I was really expecting kind of just a quick maybe five to ten minute match, just a little bit of filler. No, man, that crowd popped. Piper Neven just, she looked awesome. Candice LeRae looked great too. Carmella, she's kind of like the Miz man. She just takes opportunity whenever she can get it. Mella super kicks LeRae, knocks her to the ring so she could cover uh, Candice LeRae for the win. Excuse me, after even hit a cannonball onto Candice LeRae, Mella then super kicks. 
Piper Neven out of the ring, then goes to Candice Array, who was attacked by Piper Neven, um, and gets that three count. Carmella's headed to the Elimination Chamber. Certainly, certainly interesting. Now, let's not forget, throughout this match, um, I, I really think the athleticism of Carmella has gotten better. You know, we, especially a few years back when she was SmackDown Women's Champion, she still has it. But she's not there yet. All right? And hopefully, Elimination Chamber, she... She shows her. She shows a little bit what she's made up a little bit more. I'm not sure if she's going to take the W. It could be a huge W for her career. But man, Corey Graves was just blasting. Oh, he was. Dude, he, he was. He was. He was pumped. He was on cloud nine, man. Mella is money, man. That was I, I don't blame him. Predicted winner for that match, but I kind of like Cena. Uh, she really showed that she could kind of hang with the women in that match and. Uh, one thing I got to say, it's funny how a name change, like Piper Niven, let's just forget about Dewdrop, but she just looks like a whole different superstar. I'm very excited to see what she can do on Monday Night Raw. It's crazy what a name name change can do to somebody. You know what I mean? Just just a quick name change. Just like even Asuka, too. Like, she's still Asuka, right. but the gimmick's just a little bit different, kind of like I think what she was in New Japan. So much better. So much better. So, so much better. Let's talk about tag team action next. MVP actually accompanying Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander to the ring for their match against Gable and Otis. Give it to me any day of the week. I could watch this over and over and over. Triple H just knows what good wrestling is, and he gives Gable spotlight, man. Otis, he's just the perfect posse for Gable. Honestly, I don't care. Keep them. They're just not boring. They're oh, not boring. Awesome. Alexander and Gable starting off so fast-paced. Everybody was just sprawled all over the place but it just was so perfect all right otis the big man he is he just made everything work he really made everything work despite both teams having kind of a short period of being in troll i think alexander and benjamin this was where they kind of had to reestablish their tag team dominance especially with mvp ringside they could have taken l because i know if they took an l it, it would have been all over her business would be nothing oh, no, alexander yeah. and benjamin took took the w but give me gable and cedric again and again especially like 205 live cedric alexander rocked it oh dude i really love how they're starting to slow build back up with the hair mm. business with the backstage segments that's one thing about triple h's reign as head of creative i love these backstage segments that he's doing even the one with baron corbin and uh and JBL, it was just absolutely mm. comedic and perfectly timed jbl saying you can't polish a turd and you know that's <laughs> Baron Corbin kind of left off, so... Uh... I, I just hope this means better for Baron Corbin. Oh, absolutely. That's all, That's all I'm saying. So before we get to our next matchup, leading to our next matchup, I guess. So throughout the night, Chelsea Green, she's just she's just a star, and everybody just can see it. So she was showing her ass yeah, yeah. Pierce throughout the night. Basically, so like I'm reading kind of off a script right now, too, just to get an idea of what was going on throughout the night, but... Everybody's talking about her being like a, a a Karen. She's basically a Karen. That's what her character gimmick is. And she's selling it so well. So after basically saying, you know, I want a match, I want a match, I, I want opportunity, blah, blah, blah. Adam Pierce decides to get a little payback by hooking her up in a match against none other than Asuka. Huge pop from the crowd, nonetheless. I mean, I, I totally didn't expect that. You know, it was awesome, especially seeing her with her, her new face paint, kind of that new gimmick. Um, just looks awesome. All the women who have qualified for the women's uh, chamber match um, showed up actually around this match. It was kind of like a lumberjack match, but no women touched them. It just was kind of like, you know, they were surrounding the ring, just kind of showing dominance. So Chelsea walks around the ring, addressing every woman. Nikki Cross was ringside too. And she just oh, was, God. she just was, she just was being weird, especially throughout the night, throughout I guess you could say interviews with superstars just being odd. All right. Well, we'll get to this a little bit later. Um, not cr a crazy match here, but I see what, see what they did there. I don't think they wanted to make Chelsea green just look weak. You know what I mean? It kind of all led to an altercation and in kind of a interference, not, with Chelsea Green, she didn't really know what to do, but it, I see what they were trying to do there. Um, Asuka took the W, and then Bianca Belair comes out saying, basically, let's see which one of you five, six women, I believe, who, who six women, I believe, in the chamber match, which one of you has the balls and which one of you is going to come after me because I'm going to be waiting for whoever takes that W in the chamber. Um, but you know what? I, I, I see what they were doing there, and I'll give props to, to all competitors, especially uh, Chelsea Green. Yeah, man, she really sold that angle. 
But one thing I have to say, I love Asuka with his new face paint, man. She mm-hmm. looks vicious and ready to rock and roll and ready to challenge Bianca Belair for that championship. She's probably my winner for the Elimination Chamber. Mm. Now, let, let's move forward before we get to Elias versus Montez Ford. Um, our next stop, we were supposed to have a nice promo with Cody Rhodes and man, did we get a promo? Did we get a promo? It huh? was Paul Heyman going back and forth. It was gold. Oh. Uh, not stop and you know what they're basically just summing it up they're making this very personal and i was pumped for roman versus cody or it's going to be roman versus sammy we all know it's going to be roman versus cody sammy's obviously going to put roman over at elimination chamber but paul Heyman coming out made it personal bringing up his dad all the respect they have for each other nonetheless vice versa then basically saying like your dad said you were his favorite son but you weren't the son he always wanted roman reigns was because he's he's the top of the mountain tribal chief man you know how it is and that got to cody rhodes and that pissed him off so this is personal this is very very personal and this was whew, paul Heyman got a little teared up it, it, it's like cody went off script a little bit to talk about how how paul Heyman helped um dusty ecw era all that stuff so basically just just Phenomenal promo between those two. They could talk for 15, 20 minutes, never cut them short. It's like I could hear theory just keep going. You know what I mean? Oh, just boy. I'm a fan of theory if people don't know. So let's talk about the um next elimination chamber qualifier match. All right. Elias versus Montez Ford. Now Austin Theory sitting on commentary. Elias and Ford started clean lock up and break. Didn't expect anything crazy here. Let me just talk about Kevin Patrick, Corey Graves, and Theory on commentary. Oh boy. It was Patrick. I think he's getting used to being on commentary with other superstars and trying to become that heel or face. I think I think it's Corey Graves who, who's more of the heel on the desk and Kevin Patrick, but he's gotta work, he's gotta work on those remarks, especially theory trying to go at him. KP just kind of stayed quiet, you know. He he had to make it more interesting, you know, but nudge back at theory. But nonetheless, great matchup with um uh excuse me elias and montez ford montez ford just jumped over the ring apron right onto elias like like the, the athleticism of that guy is just nuts and i can't wait for him to have a singles push ford scored the win with a massive frog splash not sure what's up for for elias um especially after returning from his brother um oh god let's forget yeah. about that we'll, we'll forget about that it just hasn't been going much of Elias's way all right he he, he should have stayed back as as uh Ezekiel. you know let, let his brother do, do oh, yeah. you yeah. know what I mean Ezekiel main event time here we Let's go baby. main event steel cage match finally promised but we got a great match Bailey and Becky Lynch two of the best to go at it and the commentators they didn't forget to to keep saying this over and over two of the very best and you know what they are two of the very best honestly um some Spots where it was a little lackluster, some spots where, you know, felt a little drawn out. But, you know, for the 20, 25 minutes that they had, these women just just gave it to each other. It was like well, older, man. Yeah. well paced. So it got to a point with everybody beating the crap out of each other. Eo Sky climbed up the top of the cage to prevent Becky Lynch from escaping while Dakota Kai threw one of her crutches into the ring for Bailey to hit um, Becky with it. Just as she does, Lita's music hits and runs down to take out um, both members of Damage Control, Sky and Kai. To even the odds, Lita slams the door in Bailey's face, knocks her back into Becky Lynch's arm for a manhandle slam. Becky Lynch takes a W, celebrating with Leah. So it ended on on a high note, and you know what? I see it. It makes sense why why Lita, um, I guess you could say, interrupted or helped Becky Lynch with the W. But she lives in Florida, too. I guess she lives in Fort Lauderdale. So it makes sense. I think that's why they did it, just to kind of add a little, you know, a little... Um, that, little hometown crowd, that hometown crowd yeah. pop. Yeah. The hometown crowd pop. I thought a little... I, I was thinking of a little bit bigger of a pop. The crowd didn't even expect it at all. And I think they were just were, were so surprised. And it just was so last minute. Um, It was kind of pushed last minute because there were two minutes of the show remaining. They had to get it done very quickly. Um, But nice W with Becky Lynch. Really, really well done. Yeah, absolutely. This was a phenomenal way to end the show. It really got me excited for the Elimination Chamber. I love how Triple H is building this thing out. And uh, honestly, I think the Elimination Chamber hasn't had this much hype around it for a while. Oh, no. We are certainly on the road to WrestleMania, man. You cannot deny that anymore. We are full steam ahead. 
Let us know what you guys thought about the show. Always like, comment, subscribe. And we will be going to Friday Night SmackDown on Friday. So we might not have a video for you guys, but we will definitely see you next time. Until then, peace out. Peace. This has been Cosmet. Thanks for watching.